Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Pastor Moberg, would you proceed with the invocation, please? Absolutely. Father, we thank you once again for another day. We thank you for how good you've been. You blessed us to come together once again, and we say thank you. Pray, God, for the wisdom that is needed uh, to guide and direct this meeting. Father, we pray that your hand will rest upon each participant and that you will give us guidance, understanding, and the know-how to do further uh, the continuance of this city. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And now for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Krenz, may we have a roll call? Yes, of course. Chair Van Rinsburg is not present for the record. It's an excused absence. Vice Chair Alan Sheffield. Here. Larry Beaton is an excused absence for the record. Chris Hollister. Present. Brianna Pierce. Present. Patty Vogt. Present. Mr. Chair, we do have a quorum. Thank you. Um, appeal procedures. Let me read this, and then I'll be asking about uh, ex parte communication. Um, Actually, I like this version uh, of it better. Your notice is um, any person aggrieved by uh, a decision of the board may, within 15 days thereafter, apply to the city commission for a review of the board's decision. Such application must be filed with the city manager in writing. Um, objections by property owners. Uh, to national registry nominations must be notarized to be included in the record. Um, so uh, any persons wishing to appeal uh, uh, decisions made by the Historic Preservation Board uh, with respect to any matter considered at such meeting will need a record of the proceeding and for uh, such purpose may need to ensure that a verbatim record of the proceeding is made uh, at the applicant expense, um, uh, which record includes the testimony and evidence upon which the appeal is to be based. Okay, uh, persons with disabilities requiring accommodations in order to participate in this meeting should contact the city clerk's office uh, at 586-329-0100 at least 24 hours in advance to request accommodations. Uh, ex parte communications. Okay, there are none. So with that, I'm going to move forward. Um, the minutes were provided uh, to us for the January 5th meeting uh, prior to this meeting and also included in your packets uh, here. Um, so I would um, entertain a motion either to accept them as they are, if there are any comments uh, or discussions prior meeting. I move to accept them. Okay. I'll second. So move. Second. second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Passes unanimously. Okay. All right. Now we're going to open up for public comment. And just uh, remember, this is really um, uh, limited to three minutes, no action to be taken uh, on, on, on these items. And those of you who are here for the items already on the agenda, you will get another opportunity to speak. Uh, so uh, please uh, walk up to the mic, uh, provide your name, address, uh, whether you're a citizen, taxpayer, a business owner, uh, we're welcome. I don't have any cards before me, so if anyone's out there and haven't, hasn't filled out a card, they're located to my left, the yellow uh, or gold uh, slip there to fill out to be called for public comment. Anyone for public comment? Okay. Yes. I tell you what, if you want to come up and give that information in terms of your name, 
your address um, and that information, but, and we can fill that out just after your comment then. Yeah. Okay. okay, come on up. And would you step up to the podium there, please? And you can touch the button there and you, you, I mean, your mic should be on. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Okay, it's on. Uh, my name is Matthew Arnold. I'm a resident here in the city of Black and I live at 422 Madison Street. Um, I was kind of uh, just coming up and asking for an emergency hearing. Uh, just I'm trying to get the a certificate of appropriateness for a roof. I'm in a, a manner with like insurance. I had to put a new roof on my building because insurance brought me. And I've been trying to go through and do all the uh, correct things like with the county and get the county permit and the grant, like the historic grant. And I just got confused with the, I guess, permit application process going in and out of the city. Uh, there was a, a man there that every time I would go in, he, like not every time, but the first three times, he just kept offering to buy my property who worked there. And I thought that was pretty unprofessional, but I'm just trying to ask for maybe a look at like what I did with the roof. And it's, I'm just getting a lot of fines every day because I don't have a good insurance on it. I'm getting kind of screwed. Sorry for the terminology. Um, so I was just trying to get a hearing for this certificate of appropriateness, I guess, and what I did. As far as the actual application process um, to get on this agenda, what has been done as, as far as that? Um, I paid like the uh, I paid the two hundred fifty dollar uh, fee I guess for the late permit mm -hmm. on the roof. Um, and I believe when I tried to get scheduled for today, I was like one day behind. It needed to be like twelve days. And when I uh, spoke to her, it was one day short. I believe. Yeah, because it was right around that. Because it 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 is. Um, uh, uh, interesting because you you do there's an order because legally we have to notify those that are uh, surrounding uh, the area where a change is being uh, considered and so there there are requirements that um, um, have to be Miss Walsh has to to follow in order to do that so if you miss that by one day um, it's it's missed but I would believe uh, and I can let Miss Walsh speak to this. Um, we could see what there is to do now to get you there, but it sounds like you're dealing with other parties uh, uh, that are finding you. No, pretty much right now, I'm just waiting on the certificate of appropriateness that on the roof that uh, I changed out and it's already done because I've already got the permit from the county and okay. I'm just waiting on the inspector to come and check it out, but I can't do any of that until. Right, the because they. Yeah, and in order for us to grant uh, a certificate of appropriateness, we have to go through these certain protocols of notification and actual hearing and then granting. And so um, I apologize for whatever confusion. I don't know what was happening at the county or who this person was that um, uh, was sending you down the, the, the uh, possible wrong path or delaying it where you missed it by one day. But um, if we can go ahead and get that in order now, to see what can be done to be on the next uh, meeting. We we have an ordinance that we have to follow in order to grant that. Okay. And unfortunately, those notifications are key legal uh, pieces that we have to follow. Okay. All right, thank you. It was just frustrating because when I would come in to help Mr. Uh, I forget his name. Like I said, he offered to buy my place three times before offering help, which that's pretty, <laughs> that doesn't seem right. Yeah, thank you. So very much. Any other comments from the members? I'm, I, I know Matt. I know his family and everything. I think what he's asking for is if he gets the paperwork in, can we have a special meeting in a couple of weeks to help alleviate the financial burden he has? And there are procedures to call the, the, the special meeting also. And so... Uh, Ms. Walsh, can you remind us of what those are and uh, so that he hears that at the same time? The meetings have to be noticed just as they do a regular meeting notice. 
Um, so you wouldn't be able to have a special meeting until at least two to three weeks from now. It takes us uh, uh, sometimes three or four days, maybe longer to get ads in the paper because the paper has doesn't run on Sunday or Monday. Um, so even if we sent an ad in tomorrow, it would unlikely not, it would be unlikely for it to run Saturday. Um, and so you'd still be two to three weeks out. Is everything set? And are, are you okay to come before the next meeting, next yeah, scheduled meeting? Actually, yeah, I moved some stuff around. Okay. Um, I recommend that you get all the paperwork done, get everything in so it is scheduled for the next meeting then. Mr. Arlen does have the paperwork in. He just paid the fee today. Great. And so we can start that. He will be on the March agenda. Um, excellent. Sorry. There wasn't a way, but we've got to work in accordance with the with the ordinance. Um, but but thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Okay. Seeing none, we'll close the public comment uh, portion of the uh, meeting and move on to uh, regular business. Uh, the first item in terms of regular business is um, HPB case 23-01, a request for a certificate of appropriateness to demolish two uh, accessory structures and repair one um, accessory uh, structure. Ms. Walsh. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Lisa Walsh, Planning Director. The location of this property is at the corner of Kirkland and Emmett. It's 424 Emmett, as noted. It was uh, originally constructed between 80, 1882 and 1884 and one is, a, is one of the oldest surviving structures in Palatka per the Florida master site file. There are nine over nine double hung sash windows in the house structure as well as six by six casement windows and multiple leaded glass windows in the house. The carriage house structure in the backyard has a six by six casement window. Um, it was at one time owned by the Mellon family of Pennsylvania millionaire, multimillionaire fame. Um, and they, they retained ownership through the 1930s. There has been an open code enforcement case on the property since February 26th of 2021. This application is part of the property owner's efforts to resolve that case. The request is to repair various components of the house and demolish two of the three accessory buildings in the backyard. The proposed work endeavors to bring the property into code compliance in accordance with code case, code case 2021015. This includes general vegetative cleanup of the property, uh, repairing four broken window panes, pressure washing the exterior of the home, and the iron fence that surrounds two sides of the property, and remove two of the existing accessory structures in the backyard. Staff has looked at the fire the Sanborn fire maps from 1915 and 1924, which can be found online at the Florida Master Site File site. The 1915 map shows an accessory structure in place in the northwest corner of the property with the walls of the structure right on the respective property lines. The 1924 map um, shows four separate accessory structures added on to what would be the left of the original accessory structure. Therefore, all the structures could be considered historic with reference to age. However, the only accessory structure that appears to be consistent with the style of the residence is a two-story pitched roof building located approximately in the middle of the remaining structures. All the structures have a wall located on the rear property line that would not conform to current zoning development standards. The iron fence on the street sides of the property has been pressure washed. The property owner has submitted the fence does not need painting as it wasn't painted in the past. Photographs of the fence are included here to provide the board with information that the fence may have been painted in the past. The staff recommendation is such that the demolition request obviously is something that must go before the board. The other items listed on the application except painting the fence can be classified as ordinary maintenance and can be approved by staff and mostly probably don't even need a COA as there could be considered ordinary maintenance and repair. 
Staff recommends the board consider the condition, age, location, and consistency with the resident style of each of the subject structures in the backyard proposed for demolition. Staff also requests that the board consider whether it is appropriate to paint the iron fence. Sunny, if you could scroll down to the photographs of the fence, please. These are close-ups, obviously, of the condition of the fence currently. If you go to the other one where it showed the scroll, it shows that there's a uh, flake, one more up. That's flake paint right there in the scroll. So the fence was painted at one time. Okay. And then, Sunny, if you could scroll to the next picture after this one, the one of after this one, please. Yeah. Thank you. So this is a photograph of the structures as taken from the sidewalk. You can see the pitched roof on the structure in the center, roughly in the center, and also the, the windows, the casement window to the right-hand side of that structure. Thank you. Uh, does that conclude your report? Yes, sir. Okay. Do we have anyone from uh, this proposal here that is looking to speak uh, before we consider this further? Yeah, because we three of them four of them. Well, what I'd like to do is to see if if there are any are any particular things you think are germane to us making the decisions that really Ms. Walsh has pointed us to consider uh, being the uh, painting of the um, front iron fence and then which structures uh, in terms of removing or demoing uh, the this, this structures. If if you, go, go ahead. Right, my name is William Forza, 1650. I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, if you could turn on his microphone, please. Oh, I'm sorry. It. Yes, please. Yeah. Hi, my name is William Corzo, 13250 Gabor Avenue, Orlando, Florida, 32827. Uh, what we're, what I think is I'm going to uh, address the fence first, and if uh, Ms. Andrews, who's also with us, if she has a follow-up, and um, Mr. Eddie McGiven, if he has anything to add to, I would ask for the board's consideration on that as well. As far as the the fence, I. I, I recognize that picture, but I don't think that that's paint. I, I just think it's uh, flaking oxidation. Uh, I don't think that we have any evidence that, that it is paint. Um, in fact, everyone that I've spoken to, including individuals who've lived in the area, including Mr. McGiven, who's lived directly across the street from there for numerous years, has indicated that, at least to his recollection, that fence has never been painted. Um, I've heard that from others in the community as well, um, including uh, Vito Russo, who is um, part of the South Historic District. Uh, he had mentioned that he had never seen it painted, and he was of the opinion that he didn't think it needed to be painted. Now, that's neither here nor there, because he's not here to address that, but that's just been what's conveyed to me. Now, in terms of what the board should rely on here is, I understand under 5479, the criteria to, to base the decisions are based on the Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. So I have a page from that um, that I'll leave with the board that specifically is titled Metals, Rock and Cast Iron, Steel, Pressed Metal, Turnplate, Copper, Aluminum, and Zinc. So on that paper, they have two columns. They have recommended and not recommended. Under not recommended, it says applying paint or other coatings to metal, such as copper, bronze, or stainless steel, if they were not coated historically. And it does lay, it does continue to read unless a coating is necessary for maintenance. I would say that uh, it would be in need of maintenance if any of that fence were in a point of deterioration other than natural oxidation. So if, if you've been out to that fence, that fence is as solid as the day that it was built. There's no pieces that are uh, about to fall or break apart. There's nothing that is 
been oxidized to the point where it is uh, hollow or uh, it poses any danger or any kind of risk to anybody walking by. It's merely an aesthetic natural oxidation. So in, in light of that, I would just ask that at this point, the board um, in line with the uh, Secretary of Interior Standards for Rehab related to metals and, and our position that there was never a coating on these metals would ask that uh, painting not be required at this point. So may I present this to you, the board? Please. Uh, yeah. To Ms. Ms. Crane. Yes. Um, I have to disagree. The, it shows that it had been painted. Um, it's not an opinion based on just observation, you know, from the pictures, but most of my life was as a painter, union painter, so on and so forth. I worked at a maintenance at a hospital. My job was to paint the iron fences. This fence had paint on it at one time, I guarantee it. Okay. We will we will get an opportunity to discuss that as a, as a board uh, in just a bit, but I would like to hear from all uh, the, the public on this and then we'll we'll proceed from well, from there. Well, well, if Thank I may, in terms of where exactly is this? Because I, I do know that two por portions of the fence were inadvertently painted and those were the gates. So if this was the gate, then, then maybe, but that, that has since been pressure washed. So it all looks uniform at this point. That photograph was taken approximately halfway down the fence line. And you can see where it lines up with the front porch in the background. To the right of the gate. To the, to the, at the right of the gate, if, if, that, the area that's been painted that you mentioned is at the corner of Kirkland and Emmett, and it stretches about four or five feet, maybe. This is about halfway down the fence line. There was no gate there. And in, and Colin, I'm not sure what, what standard that the board relies on. It's not going to be substantial evidence similar to a commission hearing, but we don't have anything other than opinions as to what exactly that is. It's, we don't have any evidence that that's actually paint aside from, you know, one pin uh, opinion, so I don't believe that's confident substantial evidence to support. Okay. Thank you. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Harriet Andrews, 9211 55th Street North, Canales Park, Florida. And again, um, when we talk about the painting of the fence, I'd like to offer these photographs. They're date stamped from 1999, as well as some in the 2000s that are really good pictures of various portions of the fence that is not painted. So I would like to share those, um, but I would like them back. If you need them for would you please provide them to Ms. Krantz? Absolutely. Also, um, with regard to the sheds, um, we've asked our contractor, um, Edward Minchner to uh, speak to the, the sheds and what should happen there. It's my understanding that he's worked in the historic district before and is familiar with um, that area and what would be appropriate. So we've asked him to come to the meeting to share or answer any questions on that subject. I'm Edward from Ellison Construction out of Crescent City. Please proceed with speaking to um, the um, demo of the, the sheds that okay. she's referring to. I was hired by Maria Corporation to demo, well, they want to demo one and repair the other. I know that's the statement that says two, but I was hired to demo one down. Um, what is going to happen is that block wall that you see there, then the CMU wall, that's going to come down and the wall and the footer and the wall that projects out toward the fence. There's a CMU wall there also, it's about four or five foot high. It's coming down all the way to the back of where are we going to tear down or demo down 
the build that's going to be repaired. Now, if that second build has to be repaired, we'll have to bring that CMU wall all the way to the first build. I'm just stating this right now in case that doesn't work for you guys. I'm sorry, I'm looking at pictures here at the same time. Um, uh, and with respect to this, this, um, um, if are you saying that I'm trying to make sure I heard you clearly, the entire wall would have to come down, even if because the request is for the is it the middle to be restored and the others to come down, but that wall next to the one there that would be coming down and along the back where I think the staff report mentioned that that was along the property line and no longer and consistent with current code. Right. Okay, so I would have a question for, um, if, if they are doing that, do we have another issue, not for this board, but from a zoning or from a, do they need to, if they're gonna now um, do something to tear down something that in, is, is something going to be replaced there or coming down okay and it's unsafe if you ask me. because it looks like it goes all the way over to the other side yeah. there okay mm -hmm. mr yes, chairman the uh, the application was to demolish the two structures that you can see in the photograph the that are the pitched roof structure in the center and then the remaining part of it to the left. The, it looks like a flat roof and that connects to that concrete wall that you can see in the photograph. They will, they'd like to retain the structure in the far corner. In the far corner, not the one with the pitch roof, roof that is consistent with the field. No, no, what's the, yeah, make sure we know which. <laughs> Because the the the, uh, the one on the far end, there really isn't an issue with that one. Uh, the issues in terms of code enforcement and need of repair are just the the one on the, the first one, one on the far left, and the one in the middle. I clarify that what you're saying is the one with the pitch roof would be kept. And the one to the far right that looks like wood, you want to keep that too. But you want to remove the first one, the wall, and the first one where I see a garage door sort of up that's attached to the to the roof. Yes, exactly. And just and just since we're not on site and the, the picture isn't clear, if, if you can see where the second uh, building, the one with the pitched roof, meets the first unit. Those there's Something like in between there's it. like metal just literally laying on top of that. So that those that portion can be easily removed and has nothing to do with that metal portion. Right. So that's really the be the one that you would like to leave standing and repair. And the good one that goes to the right of that. And everything from the left of the side of the pitch roof needs you want to remove. Correct. Correct. Okay. Including the wall. Correct. And we don't believe that. I mean, obviously, that, that that concrete wall is not and the historic. I'm thinking. I mean, you're talking about now. What is what is the year of that? 1967 to that. And what would be put in place of that? If you took that down, the yeah. backyard would be exposed, and there wouldn't be anything. No, there's a there's a block wall. Back. Okay, so that wouldn't be removed. The block wall would stand. Correct. So the block. In the back. I'm I'm sorry, sir. Can you approach the the mic and give your name and Miss My name is uh, I should say Eric. I'm sorry. Could you hold on for one second, please? May I ask Miss Neely to collect the photographs that from earlier and copy them for the record and provide them back to the owner? Yes, please. Thank you. There, there's a second half there. You can you can continue though. 
My name is Eric McGibbon. I live at 421 Emmett Street, which is directly across Emmett Street from this property. I spent a lot of time on this property as a kid. Uh, sometime in the mid to late 70s, the owner at that time, Billy Massey, had a Comagia Volkswagen and also had a, a full Porsche 914. She wanted somewhere to get them out of the weather. So her son and some neighborhood kids built up a concrete wall for support to make the link to run from the existing structure. Now, we also built the wood structure back there as our shop. We work on vehicles back there. We built several wheelless Jeeps back there and Volkswagens and trucks. But what the thin born map showed four structures, I don't know. Those structures must have been poured out years before because from my relaxation, 65, the only structure that stood before we started building stuff out there was the two-story structure that you can see. Now, I'm not saying there wasn't structures back there in the 20s, but from 65 on, there was, and there was no evidence of any structures, especially in that corner. Uh, we poured a slab there. We built the block oil higher so we could get that up there, put rafters, and built that whole shop. That's where we did our wrenching. And to the fence, I painted those gates several times as a kid, but the fence had never had paint on it that I knew of. I think it came from the factory out of Pittsburgh as black wrought iron, and you may see some black on it, it's just where the Dina Hatton got a hold of. There is flaking in that filigree work up top that you've got pictures of. But I think that's just that iron flaking off. Is there a sealant that could be put on that iron fence? There's a, there's, I can't tell you the name of it, but there's a, a compound that ship builders use that you spray on iron and it turns that rust back to iron and it also makes it black. So that could be an option, you know, other than paint. Because unless you take that fence completely apart, section by section, and have it media blasted somehow or another, paint's not going to do any good. But it's had that same patina and rust on it since I was five years old, <laughs> as far as I can remember about it. My concern is not really about the paint. It would be more about putting a sealant on it or something to protect, protect it from going further. Uh, you know. Yeah, and that that smaller work is the only places that I think that it's really even flaking. The bars themselves are rock solid, like Will said. There's pitting in them, but there's no flaking. Yeah, I've owned an iron, old iron fence like that before, so. All right. Does that complete what we have in terms of comments on this matter? Just the only last comment is that we're really trying to come in compliance with code. So these things are very important to us that we can resolve them with the city and move forward. And that's, okay. that's we appreciate that. Yeah, Thank you very, concern. very much. Okay, um, so at this point, we're going to close the the comments. For now, did you? I, I couldn't. I'm sorry, Ms. Kitchens. Did you want to speak to? Okay, yes. I couldn't tell. <laughs> sorry. Bad head right. Sorry. A league with Kitchens, 1027 South Quilt Street, Palatka, Florida. And I just wanted to add a little bit. I think Mr. McGibbon probably cleared it up. Uh, I've been familiar with this property for 75 years and 11 months. Pardon me, 75 years, 11 months, close to 12 years, uh, close to 76 years. My family lived on Kirby Street until I was two years old. We we, we visited uh, what's now the Sherman Conant House uh, up until the 60s, 70s, whatever. Anyway, the fence was always black. I was going to say, I don't know if it was painted, but it was always black. But I think Mr. McGibbon said when, it, when they came from the factory, they were black. So it's a possibility that's why it was black, but I never remembered seeing it rusty till recent years which I don't think looks good, but I have no problem. I mean, I have no problem with that. I just wanted to add that in my lifetime, I had seen it, I had seen it black. 
And I think I plead eight Mr. Gibbon by a couple of years. So just just adding my he, he might concede. Okay. <laughs> Probably more than a couple, but just just adding my my perspective on that. It was black. Don't know if it was painted or not, but it was black and it looked great when it was black. Okay. Excellent. <laughs> All right, we're going to close uh, the comment uh, there and begin discussion uh, amongst the members. Um, any comments, questions, thoughts? I, I have some, but I'll wait to share. Um, again, I see evidence that there was paint on that fence at one time. Um, it's historic. We got to worry about preserving it. It needs to be coated with something. And it was coated originally. So it needs to be, there's a good primer you can put on a rust on a metal fence. It'll stop the rusting process, but you have to put paint over it. It needs, it needs a coating to preserve it. It was coated originally. Any other comments on that? Yes, I have, I have a comment to make. I, I don't know whether it's a paint or not. My concern is more that there's something that's put on the on the fence to um, keep the historicness of it and the preservation of the fence, whether it's a sealant or whatever, I'm not sure what that is. Rather than a painting, it doesn't bother me whether it's painted or not, especially if it turns black. Like he said, that that's a nice thing. Um, the rusting look of it does not bother me. The preservation of the fence is my concern. So I would like to see some kind of a coating put on it. I'll have to agree that it does need some kind of protectant just so it'll withstand several years to come, but the rust doesn't bother. Me. I mean, and if there is a sealant on there that will change it back to black rather than painting it, I would recommend that option other than painting because painting is just going to be a, a hassle down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, I too, and I, I wrote down maintenance um, uh, of the fence, not necessarily the look or appeal, but and I appreciate you bringing uh, the regulations and codes because you know that's what we've got to go by and make decisions on. But when I look at the fence, if I'm saying, okay, you guys are coming into dealing with code of force enforcements, um, but we're here to deal with historic um, uh, matters. And when I look at the fence to, if I was, if someone was partially restoring uh, something, um, we'd have issue with it. This seems to go uh, a halfway. You've cleaned it uh, up, but if there was a possibility to bring it as close back to its original uh, presentation, which I believe was black at some, some point, uh, that would be preferable. The maintenance of it so it doesn't further deteriorate is really the key thing that I would, I'm, I'm concerned about. Um, uh, from 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 that standpoint, and so if there would be some consideration, I think I'm hearing. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm hearing uh, from uh, the the board members to address the the maintenance of it so it doesn't further deteriorate. And if that could, by some way, get it back to an original color, then beautiful. But the key thing that we're looking at is from a maintenance standpoint that so that it doesn't further deteriorate and become any type of a, a, a hazard. I agree with you. I, that's what I think. Okay. Um, we have, wait, I wanna get to, and then we'll come back if, if we, um, now the, the, uh, the structures. Um, any thoughts or, it looks like you have uh, something, Ms. Walsh. Did you wanna make a motion to that effect about the fence? I, I actually wanted to, uh, Come back and do with both and do one and, and ask for one motion altogether. Thank you. It sounds like we've come to, okay. Yep. Um, uh, technically, that portion is closed, but I will uh, yield to the members here if we want to reopen uh, any of that after. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, did you want to do that? Is that on the fence or can we move to the structures then? Okay, well let's let's hear that. Let's hear that now. Oh yeah, I, I appreciate But but you please step up to the mic. I'm sorry. So we can get just recorded and I appreciate right. all the comments. I just I'm trying I'm trying to reconcile that um 
In terms of the, the, the state of defense right now, it's more of an aesthetic issue because like like I, I said that before the 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 deterioration is merely aesthetics. It's not no part of the fence is to the point or even close to a point. And and um, I've seen other wrought iron that you know with oxidation sometimes it, it gets crumbly and it'll break. You, you can't point to one piece of that fence where that's happening. Yeah. So I'm trying to reconcile between and that's what we're trying to address because we know just like your statement said that is coming. And but I, I would I mean it hasn't come in the past. 60 years. And again, all the people that I've spoken to that have, we've done work there, people walk by, say, oh, you guys are putting the place up, love the fence, we like the patina. Uh, you know, you've seen when people try to uh, rehab things or restore things, a lot of times it's frowned upon to, to paint things or to, to try to make them look new when they're not new. And we want to keep the fact that it is antique and looks antique. So I would just say one one last thing is that the maintenance is aesthetic. Again, there's no portion that's even close to becoming um, structurally unsound on that fence. I I would like go, go, I go ahead and make a comment on that. Um, I'm not looking at it as aesthetics. I'm looking at it as a maintenance on a historic fence on a very significant historic property in Palatka that needs to be um, made sure that it will not deteriorate. It is one of the jewels of our town, your, your property. And I would love to see that be maintained and taken care of. So I still want to see some kind of a coating put on that to preserve the fence. Okay, let's move on to the structures. Any comments from the members regarding the request? And to clarify again, to make sure we have this right, we are talking, uh, the request is to retain the middle structure there, the one with, with the point and uh, demolish both that are on either side of that, including the wall. No, no, you're shaking the head. The one, only the one to the left. So keep, um, and I forgot your 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 name, sir. Where the the where you guys built the cars? Yeah, keep that one. That's a solid. Because yeah, and that yeah, I really couldn't see. I when I was at home, I was trying to zoom in on that picture. Okay, all righty. Okay, so to make sure we're 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 clear, it is only the one on the far left that is being demolished. The other two are being retained and restored. That is the request. The only thing that the one in the middle is repaired. The other one, the one on the end, there hasn't been any. Yeah, there's nothing to be, but, but that one is being retained. I'm just trying to get what's going away in terms of being demolished. I'm trying to make sure, because I think that is the re request before us. And what is the repair on that, on the main structure with the uh, gable roof? What, what is the repair on that? We want to exactly know, not until it's all demo and all, because you could be looking at uh, structural damage. I mean, I, I think maybe the structure. Well, let me ask it this way. What is the intent with that structure to uh, make sure that it's restored to functional use, as it could be as simply as stated as that. Or what's what's the because you're you're opening up whether okay if if this is there then you're gonna might do this if this is, so. At the point from the middle structure, to just getting into the compliance uh, code because of the dilapidated state. Of the gotcha. So I would say that the majority of the dilapidation that we're actually seeing the photographs. It is from that scheme out to the left of that brick to that okay. top wall. That once that's gone, that would change aesthetically sort of the look of, of the, the remaining structure and will improve that, that entire site line from the street. And I and I believe what is what may have been getting to is well, when you're restoring that piece that'll be retained, is that going to be 
and Restore. guidelines with restored with historical guidelines, really? whether the the windows retained the 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 pretty much the materials, everything like as if there's damage to the building, uh, the windows, the doors, yeah. the roof. I think that's yeah, what she's getting stored back to the historic significance that it was. At this point, I would say yes, but the main point of it is just to, at this point, get the okay to demolish the one part and do repairs that will bring that structure in the middle into compliance so that it's not in a dilapidated state. So if that entails making any kind of repairs, those repairs will be in line with um, and this is done from like I wouldn't be changing anything from code enforcement. So, sure. what are we allowed to ask about what code enforcement asked you to do with that building? What they saw the problems were and asked you to fix? I, I sent several emails to code enforcement to, to uh, address that and uh, never received a specific response. So, I can only rely on the initial complaint in the initial complaint simply said that it was a dilapidated structure. So I don't know exactly what that dilapidation uh, means because I wasn't provided with a detailed uh, list like X is dilapidated, Y is dilapidated. Um, so at this point, uh, I, I like I said, at this point, I think that removing the portion to the left is what anybody who walks by that street would be like, that, that's what's dilapidated on this structure is that portion. Okay. Uh, the but rest I, looks old, but it's you know it's it can be fixed with updated standards. And I don't want to put words in anyone's mouth here, but your your ask is uh, because when we when we look at this, if if we say okay about the demolition, then I don't know that uh, if you're starting to do something with that centerpiece, whether you're going to have to come back on that. That's what I'm trying to to prevent. Well, and so I'm trying to get some clarification on that. Right. Now. So the clarification is that's why we have Mr. Mishner. He has worked in the historical community before, and he is the GC. So we're going to go with his expertise on that, using like material and making sure it's appropriate to the history of the, the, the home. Can you speak to that? Because so, that, that is what I'd like to actually include in our uh, piece, that, that piece. For me, it's a little too open what you're saying because I want I would like to see that center uh, piece retained and restored. Um if the your contractor is saying to me what I'm hearing is that he won't know if it's restorable or if you're gonna restore it until he starts taking down the structures to the left of it, which is open for me, that's too open for me. Um, mm -hmm. I want to see the, right. I mean, that structure it's, restored. It will be. But still, there again, I don't know how much damage done to the building. Okay. But I, I I think we have enough to to go ahead and craft what our, our recommendation would 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 be uh, on this. So thank you. So we're gonna close that part again. Um, and come here to see whether we can uh, entertain a motion with respect to uh, uh, to this request um, on the uh, on the fence. We were really focused on or focusing on. I thought the comments were focusing on maintenance and um, and preservation, and so. Um, any suggestions or or, or um, as to how you would want to craft or deal with in terms of this? I would like to see the fence have some kind of a, a coating put on it to restore to to maintain the fence, whether it's a coating or whatever. That's what I would like to see on the fence. Okay, so my my only concern is if you put paint on it that. I'm trying to pin towards um that it's going to almost make it more modern looking yeah that it might even get into those detailed grooves and right. make it look that 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 is my when i speak from from my looking at this i wouldn't want it to be painted to try to look modern and move away from where where it is 
but I am very interested. And I know the gentleman spoke to, it hasn't happened yet, but boy, has had a 60 year head start now. It's going to happen. And so if there is something that we can do um, uh, to maintain um, uh, the fence, the rust color, the, the, all of that stuff doesn't, I don't think that bothers anybody. No, that, up, up that doesn't bother me. And so we believe something needs yes. to be done to um, provide for the maintenance uh, so further deterioration uh, uh, isn't, isn't taking place sooner than we, we'd like. So as, as uh, I'm, I'm chairing this one, so I need a motion from <laughs> what are you guys? I am on, <laughs> on this. Fence does not need to be painted, but it does need to have some kind of a sealant put on it to, and whatever that is, can come back at a, at a later date with the recommendation of that at, for the fence to be preserved. And I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion here regarding the fence and a second. Uh, any further discussion? They're gonna bring the product here for approval prior to applying it. This is, is that, is, is that part of your motion or? Well, I, I, that, I mean, can be up to discussion here on how are we going to know what the product is? And I mean, you know, how far do we want to go with that? I mean, you know, we're saying that it has to be done and, you know. I, I would be comfortable going with, with just letting them know that this, the materials you need to use are in accordance with the preservation uh, of it, not necessarily to bring uh, said materials back. And so that, I know it's not an honor system that we operate on, but yes, somewhat uh, we, we do, but that would be, that would be fine that with would me. That would be satisfactory. Okay. Right. Yes. All right. So we'll retain the motion as, uh, as stated uh, before. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Okay. So we've got, uh, it passes with, with, with three to one um, on uh, on that one. Um, now to to the shed or the the other structures for for demolition. Uh, is there a motion concerning concerning those? I still have a statement that I originally made. My motion would be um, that this that center. I have no problem with the stuff to the left being removed, the wall and the small structure to the left of the main um, building. I want to see the building um, restored. Um, if it needs, you know, I, I'm not even sure what the building is. It, um, is it wood frame? Is it, okay. If it needs to structurally be structured again, then and you know the wood framing put on and the windows done and the roof and so on. I would like to see that done. I would not like to see the building removed or knocked okay. down. Or and the, made the, and the building on the side, the other side, the wood building to see you know that whatever needs to be done to that cleaned up or. Okay, well, provided it's not an issue, that then that's fine. Um, if if those to code and and the way that it needs to be, it would be two things at a minimum. And then Miss Walsh, will, um, if anything, code enforcement needs to be dealt with uh, in accordance with what whatever they laid out and what they have to come back and inspect for. But as far as whatever repairs associated with that, we would want that to be like or as historical. Uh, Material so that garage is in an essence. I look at it as a garage. I don't know what someone's calling it someone else, but that structure is um, back to a close to historical condition. And so, Ms. Walsh, did you have? I I do have a comment. I believe that if you if you if that structure is to be restored, that the materials that are going to be used and the the process and plans of how it will be done should we come back before the board for a certificate of appropriateness. Okay. All right. 
All right, so. Um, okay. Well, what 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 happens with with that? Or do you want to speak to it, Mr. Cutright? Daddy Cutright, on the board of directors. I have been in conversations with Ms. Walsh about this property, and we are willing to give them a little time to work through this the the. the the issues that y'all bring to them that may be repaired, we'll give them a little more time, but they got to keep us in the loop on what's going on and what time they need and make sure they meet those timelines that we give them. Okay. That addresses your concern then for, for that. So then there would be, once you look at this and figure out what needs to be done to it, uh, you would have to draw up the plans to restore, bring that back as far as an application um, to to uh, Ms. Walsh and, and go from there through through this this process. Okay, so then we're dealing solely with this uh, with this current appropriation uh, appropriations uh, appropriateness um, uh, request with the demolishing of that one section to the left there. Mm -hmm. Okay, right. do we have any motions re related to that? Has the original is the original? I'm sorry, may I? Um, yes. Just for clarification, is Ms. Vote withdrawing the original motion, or are we still amending and kind of amending it again and again? I can read we back. Are, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. We I, I ended up going back in that we have the separate uh, motion for the fence, and that was voted on and, and done. Now, I know she started stating something regarding mm -hmm. the structures, but I don't think we got there in terms of formalizing what that motion uh, she said I'd make a motion, but then it got changed a few times. So okay. right. And we haven't had a second on that motion, the preliminary motion that she was making. So correct. Okay. Withdraw and then I, I withdraw motion. that motion and restate that um that um I'm I'm okay with removing the left portion of that structure. And that there has to be uh, more um, to see how the building is, the, the kept roof building, um, to be uh, determined what needs to be done and uh, with code enforcement and the time and to get the certificate of appropriateness in order to move forward on keeping that building and restoring it. Is that? Is that, is that clear enough, Ms. Krantz, or, I, or if I, if I can, I, I probably could restate okay. that uh, Ms. Void is, and correct me if I'm wrong, is moving to um, approve the request to demolish the uh, uh, building on the left side, leaving the, the, the two remaining buildings. Um, and it is also the board's recommendation uh, that uh, with respect to the shed in the middle that will be retained, uh, a certificate, uh, uh, they apply for um, uh, the appropriate uh, certificate, certificate of appropriateness, of appropriateness um, uh, once they understand what needs to be done there uh, in, in order to uh, restore that. And come back to and, us. Yes, they'll have to come back to us with that. Okay. So second. that's been moved. Is there a second? Then I'll second that. Yes. Okay. Um, why don't we? Any discussion or, or, or on 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 that? We're good. Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Passes unanimously. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I think that uh, takes care of uh, this matter. Uh, thank you so very much as been stated here. Um, an incredible gem uh, for Palaka and we're so happy to see this, this progress uh, uh, moving, moving forward. Thanks again. Okay, um, the next case, um, you're welcome. Thank you.
the next case, uh, HB, HPB case 2302, request for a certificate of appropriateness to install a metal roof over a shingle roof. Sunshine? Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. My name is Sunshine Neely, Planner One. This application proposes to place a metal roof over existing shingles on a residential structure at 322 Emmett Street. The structure is located within the South Historic District, requiring the Historic Preservation Board to review it, as the replacement roofing is not the same material as the existing roofing. The property is not currently listed as a contributing structure in the Florida Master Site file. Um, the Putnam County property appraiser also lists the construction date of the house in uh, night, I'm sorry, as 1952 as the standard for determining whether a property is historic, is achieving an age of 50 years. This home may be included in the upcoming cultural survey update that, will, that should be completed in September of 2023. The applicant has provided the staff with a product style and color sheet of the roofing material. Um, the picture that you see there is the actual home. And Sunny, I believe if you, there you go. Oh. Um, so that is the product style that they will be using. Um, staff find the proposed replacement I'm sorry, staff finds, that the, staff finds that the proposed replacement will not impair the architectural or historical value of the, of the home um, or take away from the character of the district. Staff recommends approval of the um, certificate of appropriateness for HPV 2302 at 322 Emmett Street for a metal roof. I hate to ask this question, but I don't know which property it is. Is it the, the when you said 50, oh. is it the ranch style home? Like, uh, there's like three, I know it's not the one on the yeah. street. Um, um, it is, yeah. Yes. The address was here. Yeah. Um, you told me it had to be that one. <laughs> yes. That was Oh, I think the best picture we can get from Google. Yes, no, so. that's fine. I just want to make sure I'm, you know, looking at the right house. Okay, does that complete the staff Is that, report? Thank, thank you. you. Um, any comments regarding anyone who's here for this case? Okay. All righty. Um, <laughs> you're ready. Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um okay uh do do we have a motion i'd like to make a motion we allow them to put the metal roof on okay. i'll second okay as we move the second to approve the staff's recommendation to uh allow the, the metal roof any discussion any issue? okay all in favor Aye. opposed okay passes unanimously and um, <laughs> motion to adjourn. <laughs> okay. Any staff comments? Doesn't look doesn't look like it. Okay. Um, I, yes, Miss Miss. I'm sorry. If, um, if you would like to hear about the cultural resource survey update, I, I did mention it before at the commission meeting. Okay. Um, we have um, on the upcoming agenda an intent to award or we plan to award a contract to a company. And that should be starting very soon. So if you see people in the neighborhood, you'll know what they're doing there and you can tell other people if they ask you. <laughs> so I, I think I think we had a move to uh, motion to adjourn. Okay, seconded. Okay, we're adjourned. Thank you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Bye, Ms. Bell.